Hey everybody, my name's Dave, and winter is coming. Well, the final season of uh, Game of Thrones is coming, but uh, I can wait for that. Winter has arrived in Colorado 2018. There was snow in the mountains last night, and it's kind of chilly down here uh, in the flatlands. So I've got a heater in my garage. It's a comfort zone. That's the uh, 7,500 watt model. And it's fantastic. I've got a double bay garage here with about 11, 12 foot high ceiling. And uh, it gets kind of cold in here, even though it's a brick house, it's, the garage is really well insulated. You've got thermopane windows and an insulated garage door. It still gets kind of cold. So I put the heater in there. This way I can do some tinkering, work on my cars, uh, work on my bicycles or whatever. And it's, uh, but I gotta say that little puppy I'm really surprised how much heat it cranks out. I go flip the switch, it turns on. Here we go, I'll give you a quick demonstration. All right. And it's heating up the garage. Pretty nice, huh? I can feel it already. Uh, at least I can feel the air, not the heat, but. Um, and I think I only have it set on 5,000 watts, not 7,500 watts, because I heard that 7,500 watts just pulls tons of power. So if you're doing a big space, yeah, 7,500 but uh, 5,000 is enough with that unit. Now, I like it so much, I'm installing one in my other garage. Yeah, I do have two garages. I got a big one and a little one. And the little one I use for woodworking, and I really want to do a lot of work out there this winter, so got another one of these puppies, but I got the 5,000, so it's a little bit smaller. Uh, stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to install it. Hey, welcome back. So, I'm gonna explain how I installed this one last year. I wish I had made a movie of it, but didn't have a video camera back then. And uh, so, if that looks familiar, well it is. It's a dryer cable. A lot of people will hardwire it up using like uh, the liquid tight, you know, the kind of uh, tubing that you use on a hot tub or they use a same amount of flex housing. Well, I decided to use a dryer cable, and it turned out to be a fantastic idea because I can unplug it from the plug there and uh, take the unit down to clean out the unit. You know, garages are dirty, they're dusty, especially in my other one where I do woodworking. Well, of course, there's gonna be a lot of dust and dirt getting up in there after using it for a season. So you wanna be able to take it down. Unplugging it with a dryer cable, great idea. So I highly recommend it. Um, now, it is high up there on the ceiling. It's kind of hard to reach the dial there to make adjustments. So once I found the optimum temperature that I really liked, I set it at that and we're good. But running all the way to the circuit breakers, well, that's a real pain in the butt because where you see the plug up here, whoop, um, it's about a 40 foot run to the breakers. So it goes up and uh, you can see here, um, that is my crawl space. So it was kind of convenient to put it right there at the crawl space. I'm sorry, at the uh, attic uh, access point because I just needed to do a little bit of work from there. Got to stand on the ladder and uh, hook it up and uh, not have to wander too far. But pulling the wire, that was kind of a big deal. Dropping it down the side of the house, doing some piping. That yeah, was kind of a pain in the butt, but let me tell you, it was worth it. But if you can get your power into your garage or wherever you're going to be putting your... Uh, uh, your heater, once you get the power into the room, it's really easy to do. But I did something a little bit different. I installed a switch. And there we go, it's that big switch running with the pipe along the surface of the wall and up into the attic. So the power comes from the circuit breakers, across the ceiling, down to the switch, into the switch, and then back up and then across the attic again over to the uh, heating unit or to the plug that's hanging there. So let's go to the other garage and I'm gonna show you installing the unit, the uh, new unit in the other garage. So please stand by. Hey, welcome back. So I'm in the other garage now and I'm just gonna finish up the installation. I've done a lot of the work already and you can see back here, these are my sub panels. Uh, the one over here, that came with the house, the builder put that in. The one over here, 
I put that in and it runs to the outside so it's not attached to this sub panel, it's attached to the outside. So I snake through the wall and outside just back here is the main panel. Um, now the, uh, the heater in the other garage that I just showed you, that goes all the way to the outside. Um, the one that I'm going to install in here is going to go to this little mini sub panel just over my left shoulder. And uh, it's really, really easy to do two, 220, 240 wiring. I thought it was really complicated, and I used to always think that it was dangerous to play with 240, but actually you're just taking 220 volts that have different phases because you've got two rails inside the uh, uh, inside your, your breaker boxes. And you probably don't know this, but running to your house, you have three power lines. One's a ground, and two are power. And each one is 120 volts. And they go to two different sides of the breaker box. When you put in a, uh, a, uh, uh, a 200, or actually, when you put in a double pole breaker, like this one here, you can see that when you flip it, both breakers work at the same time. They're actually making, con each breaker is making contact with one side of each of the box. I'm not making that very clear. <laughs> I'm sometimes not good. I'm not an electrician. I'm just some guy with a camera who knows how to do electrical work. But let me try explaining that again. You have two wires coming in and the double pole breaker touches both wires essentially. So each one is phased differently. So you combine them together and 240 comes down the line at you. And that's how you get the 240 volts by combining the two. So when you're wiring 240 volt uh, things like the heater, you're not going to have the white neutral. The white neutral is actually going to be hot. So you're going to have two hot wires. You're going to have a black and a white and a copper ground. And uh, you don't attach to the bus bar or anything like that or the neutral things inside your sub panels. Both go to the breaker. So it'll be one will be white, the other will be black. And then of course the uh, copper line will go to your bus bar inside the sub panel. And if you have any questions about doing that, go ahead and put some, mess put, put some notes in the, in the uh, comment section. I'll be glad to answer for you or perhaps show you a video uh, on YouTube. There's millions of you <laughs> videos about how to do electrical work. And uh, that's how I learned how to do it, watching YouTube. And I've become very proficient at rewiring uh, uh, circuit breakers and, and doing sub panels. It's really, really quite easy to do. So... But if you need some help, go ahead and put, some, put a request in the comments or shoot me a, a memo. I'll be glad to point you in the right direction. But uh, anyway, as you can see over here again, that's a switch. And uh, this breaker, uh, I am using a 10 gauge wire, which is the orange stuff. Um, yellow is 12 gauge and uh, the white stuff is 14 gauge, which is what you see all the time in your house. It's the most common. Uh, that can typically handle about 15 amps. The yellow stuff is 20 amps and the orange stuff is 30 amps. And I need 30 amps to run the 5,000 watt uh, heater. The heater in the other garage that I showed you earlier, that's a 7,500 watt amp and it needed eight gauge wire. And that was wicked expensive and I needed about 60 feet to do it. So it was like $150 just in wire. So. If you're a little budget-minded, want to save a little bit of money doing this, get the 5,000 watt heater, not the 7,500. You'll save some money right there. And you can just get off the shelf wiring. So 10 gauge wire, the orange stuff, and a uh, 30 amp breaker, and a 30 amp switch. Oh yeah, the 30 amp switch you can buy at any big box store for about $9. The 40 amp switch, it's only 10 amps more, um, was 50 bucks. So 10 versus 50, $40 savings just on the switch. Now, um, here's what I did. I ran the, the uh, 10 gauge orange wire from the breaker down to the switch. And also read the instructions when you're doing a 240 amp switch. It is wired differently. And if you wire it up like a, a 110 amp switch, you will blow it and you have to replace it. It'll just blow and there's no fixing it. Uh, you basically have a melting event inside the switch, which is good because it's gonna save your 
house from burning down to the ground when you wire it wrong. So how do I know that? Because my buddy was helping me on that other one. He goes, oh, I'll put the switch in for you, Dave. I'm like, oh, thanks, dude. He put, wired it up like a 110 amp, I'm sorry, 110 volt, 120 volt uh, type switch. <laughs> Popped immediately. So that's how I found out when you do that. So I'm like, dude, read the instructions. <laughs> so anyway, there's two poles on the bottom and those are the uh, line in and then the two poles on the top are the line out. So both the white and the black, they uh, kind of go parallel to each other through the switch rather than just having the neutral going all the way to the end product like in 120 and you're just breaking the hot lead. This one, you're breaking both hot leads. So uh, from here to here, we have a connection. And then from here up there, well, let me get behind the camera here and I'll show you. Panning up, there we go. And there is my dryer plug. So it's a standard three prong dryer plug and uh, not very expensive. Buy them at any big box store or any uh, out, uh, electrical warehouse type store. And uh, once again, it's a great idea to use a dryer plug like this because I believe that is a 50 amp plug and can handle a lot of power. So it's more, it's totally overkill for this, uh, this type of installation. And then, uh, oh, um, snaking wires through walls, I'm pretty good at that. I've got fish tape, I've got glow rods, I've got a magna pole. If you check my other videos, I did a little demonstration of a magna pole. I use the magna pole to pull that because there's insulation in the walls and uh, dropping it down with the magna pole made it nice and easy. All right, so now we're gonna take a look inside the heater and how to wire it up using the dryer cable. Really easy to do. You get a three prong dryer cable uh, th or three wire dryer cable. Oh yeah, and make sure that when you buy your outlet, like the one I showed you that's high up on the wall, that your dryer, that the outlet matches the uh, plug that you're going to use. So for example, like here, buy them at the same time. So that way you know they plug into each other. I bought uh, both of these at the Home Cheapo and uh, love that store. And uh, it came with little eyes so that way they can screw right in. And uh, it was nice because I uh, just used the ground wire, which is the middle one. So the wire in the middle is the ground. How do I know? Because I followed it <laughs> from here and saw, oh yeah, that one's in the middle, goes all the way down. And it's also the one with the least amount of insulation around it. Um, then the other two, the ones on the outside, it doesn't matter which ones they connect to because they both provide uh, 120 volts each. Um, I just cut the little uh, eye off, uh, stripped off about uh, three quarters of an inch, twisted it up, and then stuck it in and then tightened it down. Nice and easy. It was just uh, yeah, less than a minute to uh, install it. But uh, here's the... Uh, the kicker, um, this wire is overkill for this box and the little punch outs over here, I don't know if you can see them, probably can't, it's a little dark in here, but there's two little punch outs, a, a smaller one and a medium sized one, which is more than sufficient if you're gonna use a normal wire, but because I'm doing overkill on this and I really wanted to use a dryer wire for the fast disconnects, I needed a bigger hole. So I got this little doodad, which uh, slides through and then has a nut that goes around it um, they're just about two bucks at uh, Home Depot and or any box store or any elect, uh, electrical warehouse, electrical supply store. And uh, you would, this is a one inch internal diameter. So you can use either a one and a quarter inch hole saw or one and three eighths inch hole saw. I used a one and three eighths and I think that was a little bit too big, but it ended up working. So one and a quarter should have been fine for that one inch uh, do that. You know something? I don't know what it's called, but anyway, um, available readily at uh, any big box store, any electrical supply house, etc. So nice and easy to install. So I'm now going to hang it from the ceiling, and I've already 
got my hanger up there. There we go. And remember, this is ooh, 12 feet off the ground. <laughs> and I'm scared of heights. All right. Please do not wish on me to drop this. I can hear you. <laughs> Oop, not quite ready. Gotta take these puppies out. Sorry, this is the boring part, watching me make mistakes as I do it. Okay, just to show you, this little dead, like this one right here, these achieve the angle. So this is the main mounting point right here, and one, two, three, these allow you to angle the, uh, the heater so that way it blows straight out or down. Would be smarter if I did this on the floor. <laughs> All right, I got the two big ones in. I got the two little ones to do the angle. And, ooh, okay, it's right where I want it. Okay, <laughs> it's hanging. Oh, by the way, it comes with hardware. Um, comes with these short little bolts, uh, lag bolts, and they're terrible. They're very wide, very short, and I don't think really gives you enough bite into a joist. So I went to the Home Depot and got three inch long screws with a big flat fender washer. Costs less than three bucks, but it's, two inches of bolt into the joist versus just getting like maybe three quarters of an inch with the one that came with the unit. All right, woo <laughs> time to plug it in. Okay. Now, hopefully, if I did all my wiring right, and I'm pretty sure that I did because I triple checked it, that puppy should fire right up. So, circuit breaker's on, switch is on, we've got an orange light, that is good news. Let's zoom in over here a little bit, and I'll clean everything up a little bit later after I'm done filming. So I like things to be nice and neat and clean. Now let's see if this bad boy's gonna work.
Alright. Okay, so there we go. It's working. Alright, that's 5,000 watts. Yeah, now it is wobbling because I've only used one bolt to hang it. Um, it's not that heavy. Um, and because I've used a longer bolt, it's much deeper into that joist. So it will wobble a little bit, but it's not going anywhere. One bolt's enough. Now, if you use this, if you get the 7500 watt, it is a heavier. So I'd recommend using two bolts on that one. So uh, perhaps put a 2x4 across two joists and then attach the heater to the uh, 2x4. So that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions about this, feel free to comment. And uh, I hope you like this video. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I've got more stuff, DIY stuff, and I'm also building a home theater. So I've got a lot of home theater stuff going on. You can check out a lot of my other videos. So thanks so much for tuning in. Have a good one.